What a pleasure. Greetings, Estate. Have you brought any news? Yes. This evening we're to meet a freedman who will give us some accurate information. He's treacherous and mercenary, but he knows the secrets of half Rome. Do you think he'll tell the truth? Ah, it takes gold to make such men truthful and talkative. You're the only person I can count on. You've been my friend ever since I met you as a legionnaire in Cilicia. Come and sit down there in the tavern with me. We'll refresh ourselves with a cup of wine and have a talk about old times. Bring us some wine. <laughs> Happy days, weren't they, when we were serving on the eastern frontier? That's when Urus was only a tribal chieftain. I've never forgotten the time that he said to me, ah. But tell me, Astarte, why are you trying to find the Princess Nisa? Are you in love with her? No. You've always been like a brother to me, which is why I can trust you. I have to kill Nisa. Kill her? Yes. By order of King Orus. I was the one who helped him overthrow King Archelaus and take possession of his throne. And now I'm rewarded like this. It's either the head of the Princess Nisa or it's my own. That's terrible. You can count on me for anything. How beautiful Nisa was. I can still see her standing beside King Archelaus. You see, we murdered every member of the royal family with a king. Except for Princess Nisa, who managed to escape from us. And today, he is afraid that his enemies might restore her to power. I must never return to Cilicia unless I can take him that woman's head. But tell me how Nisa managed to get away. With the help of a slave loyal to King Archelaus. A real giant, Marcus. It was a miracle he didn't crush us with his bare hands. <laughs> Drink up. And don't worry now. I think you're about to achieve the purpose of your mission. What is it? Everything is in order in the stables. The fodder arrived and has been distributed. And the blacksmith has finished the work you ordered. Very well. Valerius is leaving for Rome now. Is his horse ready for yes. him? Have it brought around to the front door. Also, have them bring the chariot with the team of white horses, because the senator has to go out. Hurry now. Right away. How are you, Marcus? When you can work in peace, you're always well. The master is quite pleased with the work you do. Yesterday, I heard him say he wants to reward you. Reward me? Why? Why, because you cleared out the cellars in such a short time, removing those enormous barrels that no one else was able to budge. That was nothing. For me, it was easy. And do you ever feel homesick for Cilicia? No, because I couldn't feel safe there. Mm -hmm. Tell me, Nisa, she is of noble birth, isn't she? The fate of human beings is changeable. Today, she's a slave like myself. And I swore to her father that I would protect her. Well, you must admit, fate has been kind to her up till now. And if the gods are willing, fate will be even kinder to her, thanks to the noble heart of our young master, Valerius. <laughs> <laughs> and I love you, Valerius. But I'm afraid. I know you will never have the consent of your parents to marry me. You're the only son of one of the most illustrious families of Rome. And I, I'm only a poor, wretched slave girl whom your mother herself bought and paid for in a public slave market. They won't ever let us marry, and I will lose you forever. No, we won't lose each other. My mother and father both love me and are kind-hearted. They will understand that they must not forbid our happiness, Nisa. And when I return to you here... You're leaving. You're going to abandon us another time. I have to return immediately to Rome. From there, in a few days, I'll have to proceed to Brindisi, along with my legion. When will I see you again? I don't know, but I promise the day I return, I'll speak to my parents of our love, and I'll ask them to give you your freedom and their consent to marry you. Publius! Here comes your father. Well, let's hope this visit of yours to Macrinus may serve our purpose. I trust it will. Have you had my chariot brought around? Yes, Senator. It's time for you to go now. May the gods watch over you both during my absence. And now I have to leave you. But first, Father, I would like to speak with you. Leaving so soon? Valerius, my son, who knows when I will see you? Soon, I hope. 
This particular departure, son, is not the same as the others have been. Your father and I are most upset, Valerius. What's to become of us? What do you mean, Mother? We're accused of embracing Christianity, and you know that means being faced with the threat of persecution. Vettius Rufus, you know, envies our family. But now he is the prefect of the Praetorians, all his spitefulness may quite suddenly give way to unbridled fury. But the Emperor would never allow such a man to commit an act as unjust as that against the family that added so greatly to the glory of the Romans. The Emperor Caracalla will now listen only to the words of Vettius Rufus. And the longer he does so, he grows more and more pitiless. The best of Romans, accused of imaginary crimes, are falling beneath the blows of the Praetorians. And now they dare to accuse even us of embracing Christianity. It's inconceivable that Caracalla should believe this of us. It would seem he does, Valerius. I can't believe that the Emperor is as utterly blind and cruel as you say. Now, don't worry. How are you, Nisa? I've never been so happy. <laughs> you can tell me everything in Rome. Now, I too must be on my way. In Rome? You'll be there? Tomorrow I shall go into the city for an audience with the Emperor, and there I'll refute these absurd accusations. At least I shall make every attempt to, but I'm not very confident. Will the Senate give their support? Certainly. But today, I shall seek guidance and good counsel from Marcus Apelius Macrinus, who has just arrived at his villa here in the neighborhood. The senators who oppose these merciless policies of Caracalla's all heed as one the advice of Marcus Macrinus, and he is the only senator who can command the fear and respect of that pack of criminal lunatics surrounding Caracalla. This is Septimius, the man we're looking for. Well, let's sit down, why don't we, so we can talk more easily. There. Bring us two pictures of your best Falernian. Let's hear it. Uh, I found out where you can find that girl, the one you're hunting. Where is she? Oh, she's living with some Patricia. Where? It's not far. Not more than a mile or so. Take us there immediately. But it's almost dark now. We'd better wait until daybreak. I'm losing my patience. Over two years now, I've hunted for that miserable slave girl. I sympathize with you. After two years, can't you wait a few longer? But if you knew what an effort and what a lot of cash it cost me to get this information from you. Then you're still not sure of it. You haven't seen her with your own eyes. No. I haven't, but a person that I trust has. Anyway, I'll lead you to her if you'll agree to give me another uh, hundred sesterces. A hundred sesterces? But you gave him a hundred, didn't you? Yes, I did give them to him. Oh, come on now. What's a mere hundred sesterces to a general from Felicia? Very well. Finish the business quickly and I'll give you another hundred sesterces, but only when I have neither within my power. Agreed. And now let's have a drink to the success of our little enterprise. What are you doing? I am a senator of Rome, and my household is sacred. Vettius Rufus, who gave the order for this disturbance? How dare you? You pay dearly for this outrage. Vettius Rufus, I warn you, call up your men at once. Call up your men. We can stop.
a man is worth his weight in gold. I want him alive. have been confiscated and now belong to the state. Move on. Move on, quickly. Marcus Ophelius Macrinus, what is your business here? I see you vented your hatred against Valerius and all his family. I'm the prefect of the Praetorians, and I've acted solely on the orders of the emperor. Caracalla, I'm sure, never ordered you to kill these two. Valerius and his wife were guilty of the crime of belonging to the outlawed sect called Christian. I categorically refuse to believe that either one was stained with so great an offense. They have never failed to honor the gods. Marcus Opelius Macrinus, proceed to give their bodies decent burial, but I advise you not to argue. The Emperor knows all too well your rebellious spirit and your words of hostility in the Senate and elsewhere. My words will now protest this infamy. Recall to your master's attention that tyrants like him in Rome have always been short-lived and punished. Just a little more patience. The villa isn't far away. No more than my hundred sister sheep. For this. Leave this place at once. I sympathize with your feelings, but I'm forced to obey my orders. I want to bury my parents' bodies. No power on earth can prevent my doing so. Senator Macrinus has arranged for their burial. Filthy cowards! You've killed two innocent people savagely. You're a lot of common outlaws, you and your commanding officer. But I'll have my revenge on you. Control yourself, Valerius the Younger. I'll say it again. My father was the most obedient and faithful of Romans. What you've done here is criminal. There's no use your shouting at me. I'll cry it out in front of the Emperor, then. I refuse to serve any longer in the army of Castro. Stop it, Valerius. Now get out of here, or I'll be forced to put you under arrest. Enterprise. If we'd started one I wanted to yesterday evening, we'd have had the slave girl. But my information was correct, wasn't it? Don't blame me if the Emperor decided to confiscate all that belonged to Valerius. Ah. Uh, and, and my hundred sesterces. Be off with you. Astati, there's still hope for you. You're the general of a friendly monarch. Make an application to the prefect, asking to buy Nisa yourself. The Emperor wouldn't even grant me a single audience. He made me refer my complaint to the prefect. What did you say to Vettius Rufus? That it's not clemency but justice I ask, and that I still refuse to serve in an army that destroyed my entire family. Imprudence with the best intentions is in practice the most ineffective weapon in overthrowing a tyranny, I assure you. He who tramples on the freedom of Rome won't have much more time to vent his fury on freeborn citizens. The best men among us, even at the cost of their own lives, will soon put an end to this emperor's reign of terror. The 
Crinus. You must do your best to help me recover one of my slave girls who was confiscated with the others. This is hardly the moment to lose your head because you happen to be in love with a slave girl. But Nisa isn't a slave girl in that sense, but a girl of refinement who has won my heart and whom I insist on marrying. If the gods had not wished to see us treated cruelly, I would have set her free and asked my parents to give their consent and blessing to our marriage. But now she is simply a slave girl, and you are as ever a patrician of Rome in a moment of difficulty. I'm aware of it. I wish to thank you for your wise counsel, Macrinus. Tomorrow, my household is leaving Rome for a few days' rest in my villa at Kuma. I want to breathe air somewhat purer than the cities. They say the emperor also will be able to breathe freely, knowing that I'm out of town. This as far as you've gotten? Forgive us, Master. The baggage cart is heavily loaded, and the horses were nearly exhausted. I had to rest and water them. We can't keep up the same pace that you do. How cool this water is. Would you like to try it, my lord? Thank you. I don't believe I've ever tasted water better than this. It comes from those mountains where there is an altar to one of the Sibyls. They say that this water has the power to soothe the pangs of love. Perfect. In that case, I'll need a couple of jars of it. Yes, ma'am. Fill them, and don't be long now. We will meet at the villa of Agnus Quadrius at Mintuno. Give me the reins. I want to drive a while. It wouldn't make any difference. Where are we going now? To Minturnus to work on a new road. Oh. How far away is it? It shouldn't be very far from here. Minturnus isn't very far now. I know this neighborhood. And what brought you here with us? I was put out to work by my master. He said that I robbed him, but I never stole from him. No.
was it you who saved me? Yes. Tell me your name. Marcus. I'm grateful to you. And I won't forget you. Put him back in the line and time again. You, come here. The Emperor is delighted to grant your request, and this is his decree of freedom for the slave girl, Nisa. King Oras, my sovereign lord, will be ever grateful for the clemency of the Emperor. The divine Caracalla approves what your sovereign lord is doing to bring peace to Cilicia, restoring the freedom and respect to the daughter of his predecessor. But how can I find the girl in question? The slaves that once belonged to Valerius were declared the property of the state. The Emperor has already assigned them to public agencies. One part is in the quarries of Tarquinia, and the other is building a road at Minternus. But neither is with which group exactly? Well, the slaves, as long as they remain of no particular importance to us, can't be expected to have records kept of them. But with a sealed imperial edict to display, it won't be difficult, General Astarte, to trace the girl and have her consigned to you wherever you please. I'm grateful to you, Rufus. My friends, I have enjoyed your hospitality more than I can tell you. I wish to thank you for this banquet as I leave. And above all, Prisca, for this wine which I would willingly drink all my life. <laughs> but we must drink to your complete recovery, Macrinus, and also to your permanent good health. And now, Macrinus, how would you like to pay a visit to my gladiator school? At Rome, you may have heard some talk about it. It's famous, that I know, but I will reserve that pleasure for another visit. At Kuma, I have kept my overseer waiting for me. You, Anius, are interested in creating gladiators, and I in breeding bulls. In a time of crisis like this, which do we use, my professional swordsman or your bulls? Well, now that you raise the question, I think too many swords are drawn against respectable citizens. The rate of such crimes is mounting every day, and the Emperor does not prevent them. Perhaps he even orders them. You wouldn't be in doubt as to the justice of Caracalla. I would like to be in doubt, but my conviction is that today, it's non-existent. To tell the truth, I'm still grief-stricken by what has been done to the family of Valerius. Christians must not be shown the slightest mercy. We cannot admit exceptions to an order of the Emperor. When I think of the crimes committed in the Emperor's name. Macrinus, you know that Christianity represents a threat to the security of the Empire. For that reason, it should be destroyed. I don't think so. And Valerius wasn't a Christian at all. In any case, it's better that we be kind and tolerant. Since these Christians have never resorted either to violence or to weapons. I wish to thank you again. Oh, not at all, Macrinus. It's you who have honored us. You will come back soon, won't you? At the end of the season, when I'm on my way to Rome, I would like to be of help to that slave, the one I mentioned who came to my rescue in the water. Anius, I wish you would trace him. Well, there are a great many slaves being employed on public works in the neighborhood, you know. It won't be easy. Do me the favor, I beg you. I shall be your debtor. You can rely on me, Macrinus. I promise I will do everything in my power to help you. Till we meet again. Farewell. Farewell. Do you really intend to make a search for that slave? <laughs> Not even for a moment. Macrinus doesn't count in Rome anymore. He has fallen into disgrace. And for us, it wouldn't be wise to be compromised with him. becomes marshy. We'll have to double the depth of the roadbed and anchor it in place by sinking pilings this far beneath. Well, if they don't send us some more slaves, the work will fall behind schedule more and more every day. Yes, it can't be helped. Water. Give me some water. Get oh. to work there. Keep moving. Oh. Oh. Get out. Oh. Oh. 
your feet. Move quickly, I said. Move. You two, move. Move. Extraordinary what that man can do. He's as strong as a bullock. With ten men of such strength, the work would proceed ahead of schedule. I'm sure of that. Do you have a permit to enter here? Oh, what a nuisance. As if this was the first time you've seen me come here with wine for your soldiers. Ah, you are the one who was always a nuisance to us, Aglaya. <laughs> Aglaya. Marcus, my dearest, I couldn't come here these last few days because there was so much work to do at the tavern. I was beside myself. Tomorrow, we're working near the river. I'll come at any cost. I'll think of some excuse to satisfy my master. That's enough of your chatter. Go on, pour out the wine now. I'll see you tomorrow, Marcus. Go on, I said. You too, Marcus. for me at the place we agreed upon. Very well. <laughs> Imagine what a life it was. Three years in Bithynia. You're lucky. Three years without the nagging of your wife. <laughs> Go on, you're through. What may I offer you, sir? Bring me a picture of your Falernian. Tell me, can I have lodging for the night in this inn? Yes, indeed. A picture of Falernian. There's someone who wants a night's lodging. Well, let him have a look at the room upstairs. Tell me, do you know of any slaves around here assigned to work on the new highway? There's only one group, and with women in it, too. Have you noticed a tall man working among them? A very strong man, and his name is Marcus. Yes, I have seen him. And I know where you can find him. 
where's the room I wanted? This way. Seven for me. Billy, she was something you see once in a lifetime. You never got a chance to look at her, but she was the most beautiful woman in all of Bithynia. <laughs> I bet you'll be dazzled by any old crone of 80. Nice. My throw. Eleven, now it's your throw. Does it suit you? Yes. Why are you so interested in that slave? I'm very fond of him. He once belonged to my family. Have you also noticed a girl with green eyes and beautiful blonde hair whose name is Nisa? Ah, I begin to see. You've fallen in love with her. It's she you want to rescue. Would you be kind enough to help me? I'll see that you're well paid. No, I don't want a thing. And I will do what I can for you. You can trust in me completely. And why? Because I'm in love with Marcus. What's the name of this man? Jesus. He is called Christ. And his followers are beyond counting. And spread throughout the world. And you? Do you believe all this nonsense? The message of Christ is our only hope of salvation. The day will also come in which there will be no more slaves or masters either. And all our chains of iron will be broken and taken away forever from our hands and feet. Are we supposed to forgive even the overseers who are cruel to Why, us? of course. We must forgive even our enemies, my child. Because only through forgiveness may we enter into the kingdom of heaven and sit on the right hand of the one who is the only king in existence, our Lord. Listen. Listen. Over here. Get away from there. If not, I'll whip you. Listen to me. I have news of importance. Let me speak to the chief overseer right away. Yes. Go on, go on. <laughs> you must eat something. If you want to survive, you must keep up your strength. No. Valerius has forgotten me, I know. An obedient slave girl does wrong to raise her eyes to those of her own master. I should have expected it. Valerius will keep his word. If I still control myself, it's because I'm waiting for his orders. Believe me. What do you want? I overheard them plotting as Christians. The old one said that their god would return because he wants to reign as king in place of the emperor, no less. And the soldiers of this king are supposed to be those dogs, a pack of slaves in chains? <laughs> Don't let them scare you. But they say there are Christians even among the gladiators trained by Anulus. Don't you know they have weapons? If you're imagining all this, I'll have your tongue burnt out with a pair of red-hot pincers, I warn you. I swear it's only what I heard. I'll go tell the quester then. You'll be the one who pays the wine at the tavern. We're not through yet. That's the only outside window in the prison. You wait here now. I'll go and try to draw the sentinel away. After the innkeeper has sent me to bring you some wine. It's a gift from your centurion, in fact. Give me a taste of it. Ah, uh ah. -uh. First, I have to deliver it to the guardhouse. If you want any, come along. Mm, I can't do it. I'm on guard duty. Oh, don't let it worry you. I'm sure those bars are much stronger than even your mighty arm. Come on, do. You wait here. I brought you some wine. It's a present from your commanding officer. Seems like the centurion must have heard what we were saying a little while ago. Wonderful. I never refuse free oh. wine. Hey, what is mine? <laughs> You'll be next, dear.
Lisa. Lisa. Valeria. I'd almost given up hope. My darling, I've come to get you out of here. Call Marcus. Marcus. Marcus! Valeria. Marcus, we haven't a moment to lose. I have two trustworthy men on guard to keep us covered. Our glide has been able to draw away the sentinel. Centurion ordered me to bring him five whole pitchers of wine. <laughs> well, the first one, he poured down standing on parade in honor of Mars. And the second one stretched out in Marsh's embrace in honor of Venus. <laughs> That's a sacrifice with us in honor of Venus, I glide. Ah, uh, no one gets to sacrifice to the love goddess with me unless he delivers me from that foul-tempered innkeeper once and for all. <laughs> Too expensive, Turtle Dove. Venus herself wouldn't cost us so much. <laughs> and chain him to the wall. Don't stand there. Do just as I told you. I'll cure you of trying to run away, you weak-minded monster. You pay me for what you've done. Move! Move! Pull those chains tighter around him so he can't move at all. You're going to pay two for this night's work. That beast can't protect you now. He'll never be able to help you. I'll cure you both of wanting to run away. When a slave rebels the way you did, he should be strung up and nailed to a cross. But to do away with a brute who has the strength of a hundred slaves would be too wasteful. We can do something to you to make you docile and helpless without affecting the strength of your arms. You'll find out. Even a lion without his eyesight is no longer a wild lion. <laughs> There's nothing to worry about. You'll be on your feet in a few days. Your wound isn't a serious one. The soldiers evidently didn't know you. Otherwise, they would have been here to get you. No, I'm all right now. It's for Nita that I'm so upset. Now that she's back in the hands of those butchers, they'll be more vicious after our attempt to get her away. Oh, don't worry for Nisa. The strength of our invincible friend Marcus will protect her even now. The iron is white hot now. Just right. <gasps> look straight into my eyes, because this is the last time you'll look at anyone. What are you doing? 
Webster. This slave was caught trying to escape and inciting the others to rebellion. Why, the man's a constant threat to us with his superhuman strength. You want to destroy an invaluable treasure such as this? He could become a most magnificent gladiator. What is your name? My name is Marcus. I'll take you into my service. If you show as much strength and spirit when you fight in the arena as you've shown in prison here, I might even grant you your liberty. I am willing to fight as a gladiator if you will let her come with me. Is this woman yours? No, but I promise to protect and defend her. Conduct this slave under close escort to my gladiator school. And have the girl taken to my villa. She can serve my wife. The guards protect you more than any mortal deserves. You, release the slave at once. Your muscles and you had my brain power, who knows what we'd be in the world? We could be emperors, at least. <laughs> what would you do if you were emperor, Papilius? Uh, I'd run away, yes. Because for me here, there's no future. <laughs> but an emperor can't run away. Uh, that's what you think. <laughs> Yesterday, I saw a glide. She asked me to help her get inside here. She wants to see you. She's in love like a pussycat in the moonlight. Meow, meow. Help her if you can. <laughs> I told her to make a noise like a hoot owl, see? And to bring some wine, too, otherwise she won't get in. <laughs> drink it, drink it, to keep up your spirits. Follow through. That's it. That's it. <clears throat> That's enough for you. Your turn now, Marcus. The rest of you out of the ring. You there, you can be the first to try him out. Circus? Uh -uh. Easy there, or else you'll be sorry. You've made excellent progress here, Marcus. When you come to fight in Rome, no gladiator I know will be in a class with you. When do we go to Rome? Ah, uh, that's whenever the master says. You, you, some practice. Come on out here, lively. Get your helmets on. Uh, don't wash yourself too much, otherwise your muscles will get a chill in them. <laughs> now, what's all this attention for? <laughs> I've already met all my sisters on your first professional fight. Don't you expect me to take good care of you? <laughs> Marcus! Uh, 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 
Now, now you dry yourself well. Nisa, finally. I tried over and over again to come here, but the Sentinels always sent me away before. Today they let me come in for once. Popilius brings me news of you. How does your mistress treat you? I must say she's fair. Life with Friska is more humane than laboring on the highway, but I still feel ill at easier. Better if I'd not survived and perished in that hell house, then Valerius would never have been wounded. I've had no word of him since then. Never fear. If it were serious, a Gly would have let me know. Oh, Marcus, I'm so worried. If I only could be near him now. I am sure, Nisa, that we'll have news of Valerius very soon. Oh. Now I must go, or my mistress will look for me. Remember, if you ever need me, just tell Popelius. Thank you. I'm leaving for Rome. I must speak with the Emperor at once. I've discovered some Christians, even here in Minturnus. Caracalla will have another proof of your fidelity. But with your weak character, I'm afraid it will avail you nothing. We'll remain forever rotting away here in this dreary wilderness, while other men of less capacity are raised to the highest positions of courtiers. You'll see, this time Caracalla will listen to my request, if only because of the hatred he feels for the Christians. Then tell him also what we learned from Macrinus. I shall also tell him that. In a word, beg him, promise him, but please do something that will get us out of this provincial life which is so suffocating. I'll do my best. Keep calm, Prisca. Oh, the same old promises as usual. No, believe me, Prisca. This time I will be successful. Your wish will be granted. Now we'll find you. Don't be afraid of it. Clumsy coward. You don't have enough spirit to be a good fighter. Arrest those two gladiators. I know they're Christians. Eight guards, come with me. Step forward. To the prison. They're Christians, you say? Yes, I have definite proof. Be careful, because these fanatics are known to be infiltrating everywhere. Harvey. I hear that you've become the best of them all. He's better than the trainer he is. <laughs> you shall have your reward, my friend. When I return from Rome, your first professional fight before the public will be to the death. No one after such brief training has ever entered the arena before, but I have great confidence in you, Marcus. Inside, come on. Won't you sit down, Valerius? Serve the wine. To what do I owe the honor of your welcome visit? I have come here to seek the kindness and the compassion of the good Questoranius Quadrius. My husband has gone to Rome for an important conference with the Emperor. But you may speak freely with me. If I can be of use to you, I should be delighted. I wish to thank you, Prisca. I have heard, of course, of how you've lost all of your family, and I'm distressed beyond words. But a noble young man like you, brilliant and gifted, should never be in doubt of himself. We'll see that the Emperor is told. Don't. No, it's out of the question. I wish to redeem two slaves who are now in your household and who formerly belonged to our own. I would like to free them. Who are they? Their names are Nisa and Marcus. It's plain about Marcus. As a slave, he's invaluable. A gladiator like Marcus could at any moment be sold and bring you a fortune. Oh, I assure you, Prisca, that is not what I intended. My true affection for him is like a brother's. And what does the girl mean to you? She enjoyed affection all the time she was in our house. My mother loved her well. Valerius, don't think that I can't appreciate what your tenderness is for her. I find it hard to believe that a little slave girl is of such worth that she merits as much attention as all this. Of course, unless... Don't ask for more reasons, I beg you. I count on your understanding, and I shall be grateful. Very well, Valerius. When Aeneas returns from Rome, I shall speak to him and let you know what he says. But why don't you call on me more often? I'll be happy to.
almost seems impossible to me. After all we've been through, that terrible night. And that horrid cell for the slave. How I suffered. How I longed for you to come. And you were wounded. It's healed now. I was lucky at least for once. I'd lie, it kept me hidden out of danger. But don't let's be seen together. If they find us, it might be dangerous for you. I'm past caring. If I can only stay near you, I'm willing to submit again to the overseer's lash. It wouldn't be prudent in view of what I've just asked your mistress to do. I mean to redeem you and Marcus both from Anius. Oh, Valerius. Are you sure that's not a hopeless dream of yours? No, it's not hopeless. I've spoken to Prisca, and I've persuaded her to use all her influence with Aquesto. Pray that heaven is willing that we all be happy. My parents are gone now. They can't share our happiness. I know. I'll try to give you all my love to make up for them. I shall always be near you. Is Prisca kind? She's rather demanding. She's kind, really. I enjoy a degree of liberty in the household. But I'm not with you. And that's what's worse than chains and iron fetters. It will soon be over. Lisa! Lisa! Valerius! Don't worry, I'll never leave you here. for a whole week. That's a great idea. Now be careful. Oh, stop worrying. No one is going to find out. Let's hope not. Go ahead. Let's pray the gods are on our side. Wait a minute. They'll be kissing each other, and I'll probably get beaten up. There's no justice. What are you doing here? Who are you? <laughs> Don't you recognize her? She's an old friend of Marcus. Go on. Go on in. But now be good. There'll be free wine for you, too. There's so much in love. Haven't you ever been in love? Well, then. <laughs> Look. Valerius has gone in to talk to Tulia Prisca. He's going to ask if he can buy nieces and your freedom. I was sure he wouldn't desert us. He promised to try to do the same for me. We're going to be so happy, Marcus. Tell me, Nisa, why do you think Valerius is so anxious to buy your redemption? I don't know. He was once my master. For such great generosity, there must be a strong motive. The Valerian family has perhaps some reason to feel indebted towards you. On the contrary. I am the one who owes them a life of serenity and comfort until the day that... And it's simple, really. Our friend Valerius wants to redeem his mistress. I have never been his mistress. Our love has always been pure and honest. A young slave girl like you is only to be used as a plaything for her young master, as long as she pleases him. But when it's over, she finds herself sold to an ugly old merchant, or perhaps... No, no. You wouldn't do that, would you, mistress? I know Valerius loves me. You thought you knew it. But perhaps you'll find him changed towards you. Don't say that, mistress. Accept his offer of redemption. Have some pity on me. I beg you, let him redeem me. I beg you. Come in. There's a slave girl here from the Questa. Show her in. Come in. Were you sent by Prisca, the wife of Agnes? You? For a Valerian, this is indeed a miserable hovel. And you don't even have an attendant. Now I understand your anxiety to buy Nisa. Have you come here to let me redeem her as I asked you? I have come to give you some good advice, Valerius. Instead of wasting your time with some wretched little slave girl, why not think about re-establishing your place among the Romans? and cultivating those friendships that might help you to regain your rightful position. I must confess the truth. Your Anisa is the girl I love with all my heart. That's why I want to redeem her. How low you have fallen, even in your sentiments. I shall do well in refusing to sell it to you, at least for the prestige of the Valerian family. Whatever the cost, I intend to have that girl. Don't you think it's a little imprudent to speak in such a way to the mistress of the slave girl you love? 
Julia Friska, listen to me. I heard what she said to you. Be careful, Valerius. You know, Aglaya, I love Nisa. I will save her if it costs me my life. Just don't forget that a woman who enjoys cruelty can inflict any torture that she wishes on one of her slaves. For much longer. Valerius has made an offer to redeem you. I don't believe it'll happen. Our mistress is jealous. That's why she sent me to work here. Valerius will rescue you. It won't be very long now. Have faith in it. I hope that you've learned your lesson. Don't play the spy. And keep your hands off these poor people. I suggest you listen carefully to Marcus, eh? And keep his words clearly in mind here, because we're sure to be here again sometime when you don't expect us. Or what's next in the curriculum? <laughs> now, don't you forget. <laughs> Get back to work there. Get to work. for. Did you see what they're doing to Nisa? Prisca has decided that Valerius can't have her. Well, anyway, those beasts of overseers will remember the lesson we gave them. And in the <laughs> meantime, Nisa's at the mercy of her mistress, who won't let her be redeemed because she's in love with Valerius. Valerius is a handsome man. If I were a girl, I'd fall in love with him myself. <laughs> Listen to me. We're going to help Nisa to escape. What do you mean escape, huh? I've got to rescue that poor girl. I can't leave her there. You've got to help me. I'll get her out if it costs me my life. Just a minute, just a minute. If it costs yours, not mine. You are big and strong. You can use a sword. You're not afraid of anyone or anything. I know. Look at me. Just look. One careless touch from one of your great poison. I'd be broken right in half. Even if your body is weak, your heart's as strong as a lion's. My heart, my heart. I tell you, this is going to end badly. Will you help me? Well, all right. Ambassador of Stati on a mission from the King of Cilicia. He has a sealed decree from the Emperor. In what way can I be of service to you? General of Stati is looking for a Cilician slave girl whose name is Nisa. Nisa? There are many slaves belonging to the state working on this project. I don't recall that one. You're quite sure? You can look for yourself if you wish. I'm quite certain that she's not here. Come on. Enough, you two. they're shut up in the dungeons below the gladiator cell. You'll be responsible, and I want you to make sure your soldiers guard them day and night. They are Christians. You shall be obeyed, Quetor. Also, the slaves that I've transferred from the project of public works will be placed under your supervision. I intend to have them dig an eel pond on my estate. Guard them closely. I know how to take care of the scum. Leave it to me. Who are they? They're Christian slaves. 
Wait and see what happens to them. After they finish digging the pond to keep the lampreys in, they'll be fed to the same lampreys for lunch. I guess he must have got the idea in Rome. Agnes, you're back at last. I've awaited you so anxiously. I hope you have good news to give me. <laughs> well, I think I have. Then you are satisfied with your decision to visit the Emperor. Extremely satisfied. He treated me just like an old friend. He kept ambassadors and all kinds of important people waiting in order to talk to me. Caracalla gave me a free hand in order to get rid of the Christians. Oh. So before I started back, I arrested a good number of them. They're strange criminals. Don't try to resist arrest and confess immediately. Quite incredible. But have you spoken to him about your aspirations? Five years in Mentona's are a real exile. Oh, if I can help to exterminate the Christians, I'm quite sure that I will be given a high position at court. While I was in Rome, I spoke with Vetsius Rufus, the prefect of the Praetorians, about this. He was very encouraging indeed. Who are these men? They want to speak to you on behalf of an ambassador from Cilicia. Ah. Health to you and prosperous days, Anias Quadrius. Astarte, general and ambassador from the king of Cilicia, is eager to be known to you in order to discuss the affairs of his nation. The ambassador of a king, friendly to Rome, will always be a most welcome guest in my house. Please convey to General Astarte and his suite an invitation to dine with me at my table tomorrow evening. I'm honored. Accept my thanks, Arnius Quadius. Farewell. Farewell. The warm reception I had from Caracalla, give me some wine, has obviously increased my prestige. <laughs> you see how the ambassador of the king of Cilicia wants to discuss his private affairs with me. I know your prestige won't improve at all until you've crushed the conspiracy of the Christians. When I have all of them in my hands, I will send them as a present to the emperor for the games in the circus. Only the claws of a lion will crush forever those miserable rebels. My mistress, have you agreed to my redemption? You will find your redemption in the jaws of the lions in the circus of Rome. I don't understand you. You're a Christian, aren't you? You were praying to their cross, weren't you? Don't pretend you're not. If you say praying to the one God, who asks for love and forgiveness for all men, is a crime, then I can only confess to it. Take her away and throw in prison with the others. Have you heard the latest? What's happened? Prisca has ordered Niza thrown into prison. I found out from the maids. In prison? Yes, with all the Christians. Why must they persecute her so when she's innocent? I'm afraid Niza has confessed she worships the cross and wants to show the same... Enough! We can't wait any longer. We have to escape. What is it, Marcus? Niza has been imprisoned as a Christian. She'll be condemned like our comrades were arrested. She is not going to be martyred. We'll rebel and save her. That's a desperate attempt for so few of us. Marcus is worth a hundred soldiers. If they capture us, we'll all be killed. If we don't try, our comrades and Nita will face certain death. And what will our fate be except to die in the circus to entertain the mob? We must try this very night. There are four of us. Five! And the others? You, speak to the rest of the gladiators. They love liberty as much as we. And you, secure the weapons. And me? Don't move from here. You keep a sharp eye on the sentinels. Leave it to me. Ah, don't be so high and mighty. Don't you know who I am? A glide. Accept my profound respects, my noble lord. I advise you not to be so aloof with these friends of mine. We're members of the suite of the ambassador from the king of Cilicia. You should have respect for us. <laughs> At this very minute, he's being entertained by the Questa Arnold. I'll bet you're here on a mission of great importance, aren't you now? 
<laughs> Wouldn't you like me to tell you? Well, you know, it's always interesting to hear what's going on in foreign countries. And I'm the one to tell you because I like you. I've come here with a very influential person. Ambassador Astarte. I drink to the health of King Urus and to that of Astarte, his most noble ambassador. Now, tell me, to what do I owe the honor of your visit, noble Astarte? I am here in search of a royal princess of Cilicia who was led as a slave to Rome about two years ago. She is the youngest daughter of King Archelaus, whom you probably recall. Her name is Nisa. In my household staff, I have no Cilician slave girl with a name like that. Nisa was a slave in the house of Valerius and subsequently assigned to public works in this zone. The slaves confiscated from the Valerian family our property of the state. And I can't possibly. I have a decree from the emperor. I'm informed that the slave girl is actually in your possession. Very well, Astarte. Very well, of course I look for this girl. But there are thousands of slaves employed on my estates. And unfortunately, I cannot tell you now if this Nisa exists or not. May it please the gods that she be found in our possession. I should be delighted to honor your king by setting her free. But I'm certain that these informers of yours are mistaken. Astarte hopes to get his hands on Nisa to put her to death, and it's by order of the King of Cilicia. She is the only surviving princess of the royal family that was driven from the throne, and she represents a danger to the king who usurped it. Nisa, born a princess of Cilicia? I can believe it. The stories told by a drunkard are often true. What are you going to do? We must act at once, together with Marcus. We must save her before it's too late. I'm coming, too. Hey, Papilius, why out so late? Uh, well, I just can't sleep, that's all. I envy you. I can't hold my eyes open. Well, that's because you drink water. If you drank wine like me, you'd be more alert. Yes, you get your wine for nothing. You get special treatment from that tavern girl. Oh, well, what do you expect? I'm so handsome. <laughs> Go ahead. We must save Nisa at once. Astarte has come here to kill her. Astarte here? That murderer. He's dining with Agnes. There's not a moment to lose. Where is Nisa? In the prison with the other Christians. We must get her out and far away from here. Yes. Come on. We're ready to do what we can. We'll be glad to fight for you. Thank you. I thank all of you.
escaped. All of them, Christians and gladiators, all of my huge investments swept away. The guards were taken completely by surprise, sir. What good to me were your hundred legionnaires on guard duty? And overseers, supposed to be first class. How did they manage to break away from their chains and bars? With the aid of a slave of great power, together with an overseer. Marcus. I should have known better than to prevent them from blinding him when he was on the road gang and rebelled. Ever since Marcus was enrolled in the school for gladiators, discipline has been impossible. What did you say was the name of this slave who rebelled? Marcus, he's a Cilician slave. Was there by chance a slave girl with him named Nisa? Yes, she was in the death cells because she has confessed herself a Christian and she too has run away. The girl I was looking for was in your possession and you flatly denied it. You countermanded an order of the emperor. Astarte, we too have just learned for the first time that the slave girl you wanted was here. How could we know all the names of those miserable Christians that we have had arrested? But now I'll never get my hands on Princess Nisa. Noble Astarte, you shall have your princess. And you shall have her sooner than you think. Because those runaway slaves can't have got so very far away up till now. And when I get my hands on Marcus, I'll punish him as he deserves. If we stay here much longer, sooner or later, they're bound to capture us. For me, that will mean the axe, but for you, the cross. Don't any of you forget that for a moment. The only thing left for us to do is to try to make our way to safety across the sea. In Iberia, my uncle is proconsul, and he can be counted on to save our lives. But how do we get there? I'll go to Formia and find a ship that will give us passage to Iberia. Once there, we will be safe at last. I'll be back soon. Formia isn't a long way off. Marcus will take care of you, Nisa, and the others as well. Don't worry. She's here with us. You're welcome, Vetsius Rufus. And you too, noble Astarte. May the gods look with favor upon you. More so than on you, I trust. The emperor is most perturbed at what is happening in Minturnus. Why didn't you turn over to Astarte the slave girl he had been granted? Uh, uh, he will have the girl as soon as we can capture those rebels. Why, there are a mere handful of slaves, badly armed, and feeble Christians incapable of putting up a fight. But commanded by a patrician as clever and courageous as young Valerius. And with that, Marcus. I've been sent to take over full command of the military operation. I shall go with you. I have to deliver Nisa to my king. That's agreed. You, Anius, are to follow my orders now. Very well. What do you intend doing? I intend to comb the neighborhood with constant patrols, and I'll force those rebellious slaves to surrender. Then I shall punish them without mercy to set an example. How soon can you muster your soldiers? I'll see to it immediately. But please come inside. And you'll need it, too. There aren't any springs in the forest. Oh, but when are you going to bring us wine again, Aglai? Water makes tadpoles grow in your belly. Oh. You should be thankful you have something to drink, at least. Pretty soon I'll have to bow to you as a patrician Roman lady. Until Valerius is returned, I don't dare hope for oh, anything. Oh, he'll be back. Rest assured of that. Mm -hmm. There are better times ahead for us, too, Marcus. Good girl, Aglai. You have a good heart. Keep Nisa company and cheer her up, will you? Let's go. Good hunting. Good hunting. Hey, watch out for wolves now. Aren't you coming with us, Papilius? Oh, no, no. I always go hunting all by myself. <laughs> closely everywhere. You, Anius, take your men through the valley. I'll follow along the riverside. 
You will enter the forest with your cavalry only. The infantry is to be left at the edge of the forest. Very well. I'll go with Anius. Yes. You come with me. Wonderful. See what a good hunter I am? Oh, yes, I should say so. Much less work and more to show for it, too. But it's sweet, isn't Oh, yes, it? indeed. It's delicious. Poor little fellow. It breaks my heart. Why, there's nothing to feel sorry for. Well, you say we let him go, eh? Hey, you've lost your mind with all of us practically finished. No. Look at me. Let's let him run away. What do you mean? You go. love it. Just wait till I've roasted him on a spit. Then you'll see. On a spit? Yeah. What do you oh, mean on a spit? Now, come on. Oh, give him to me. Come on. Oh. Infantry column to the right. March. Cavalry, follow me. to drive us down into the lowlands. I hope you're right, Adelaide. Oh, I wish I could bathe in warm milk like they do in Rome. Wouldn't it be divine? Oh. Adelaide, you should be grateful for this clean running water to wash yourself in and for not having welts on your back from being whipped, too. <laughs> Today, I'm pretending to be a real patrician lady. <laughs> Lisa! Lisa, the soldiers are here! Tell me where the others are hiding, or I'll have a lot of you killed. Round up those women before they get away. Did you find anything? No. I wonder where they can be hiding. We must capture those slaves. Rufus may be a great general, but I don't see the necessity of using so many men to hunt a handful of slaves. It's not Spartacus and his army that we need such complicated maneuvers. What would you have done instead? I'd have waited until hunger and cold drove them out of the forest. <laughs>
smoke. Over there. The people. Marcus. Those soldiers. Rufus. They've taken everyone away to die. When? Just now. To the... Papilius. Oh. Papilius. Romans, even if they do outnumber us. Send for the others in the cave. It's still be too few to beat them. I'm not eager to die, but I won't abandon our friend. Whoever wants to keep the freedom I gave him can stay behind. I'm going. Come on, man. The majority of the fugitives have been recaptured. There are very few left, and we'll get them soon. That won't be easy. You still haven't captured Marcus, and he's the worst of all. We'll capture him, too. Don't worry. Because Hercules. And handsome, too. Just a mass of muscles. The slave girl's attractive. So the sheep have come back to the fold, eh? <laughs> Little Nisa doesn't look so pleased with herself. Where is your handsome Valerius, my dear? A runaway slave and confessed Christian. One death is not enough to punish both crimes. Your patrician lover will come to the same end. How often I've repented having saved your life that time. But now I will be splendidly entertained watching you die like a bull in the slaughterhouse. <laughs> Why don't you call upon your miracle-working God to free you? Someone told me that an old Christian during the night invoked this God of his and went flying head over heels. <laughs> <laughs> Invoke your God, why don't you? Let's see you fly if you can. Show us this fantastic magic of the Christian traitors. Your summary punishment will serve as an example. Take them away. When are we going to see these famous dancing girls? I promised you a magnificent spectacle, but it's something much more exciting than dancing girls. Some jugglers, then, or the gladiators that you have no more. A speckle even more rare and far more exciting. The Christians. <laughs> Worthy of a poem. They say that they die singing songs. A centurion wishes to speak with you at once. Not now. They believe in their resurrection. Vatius <laughs> <laughs> Rufus, what do you want? The Emperor Caracalla was killed yesterday in a palace revolution. And who has been proclaimed the new emperor? 
The legions, the Senate, the people are claiming various names, including your own. But nothing is decided so far. But very soon the Senate will establish who is to be the legitimate successor. I will accompany you with my legion. We mustn't miss the spectacle of the Christians and the slaves' death. We will leave immediately afterwards. I pray that the gods grant you the robe of imperial power. You won't go and forget your old friend, Caesar. Let us drink to the health and fortune of our dearest friend, Vetsius Rufus. I offer the sacrifice of those rebels to the father of the gods, that he may protect my interests. Glory to Rufus. Glory, Glory to Rufus. In prisoner and hauled to Minturnus in chains. They wounded and captured even Marcus. We all fought as hard as we were able, but the Romans outnumbered us. Ten to one. Don't think that any of us ran away. Look, nearly all of us were killed or wounded. It's not enough to be brave against such overwhelming odds. Believe me, Valerius. However, we managed to get away with a few of their horses. The gods are truly pitiless to me. I had found a ship to take us to safety in Iberia. Why can't I escape this curse that hounds me with misfortune? Why can't I? Look there, Valerius. Here comes a slave who belongs to Agnes. I've run away from the villa to warn you. Today there is a great feast in honor of Vetius Rufus, who's going to Rome. As a spectacle worthy of such an important guest, they're going to crucify the Christians and all the runaway slaves. While we stand here talking, they may be dying. should really be a long line of them stretching to Rome to remind them of Spartacus. I think you would miss least of all as some musicians so that we wouldn't have to listen to their screams. Ha, if you'd ever been a soldier, you wouldn't be so sensitive to a few little moans. <laughs> Why don't you prove your strength to us now? Tear yourself loose from there. Come down. Show what you can do. <laughs> be brave, Oglai. I'll try. The woman you love should show herself worthy of you. Oh, what a pity your beloved Valerius isn't here to admire you now. Well, my little princess, you finally ascended your rightful throne, huh? <laughs> oh, Lord, forgive us our sins.
crimes. I thank you for having saved the lives of my friends. We shall always be grateful to you. To have saved the life of the son of my old friend Valerius the Elder is my first joyful achievement as emperor. But how did all this occur? Vestris Rufus condemned these innocent people to die on the cross. I tried to rescue them, but if you had not arrived on time, all of us would have been slaughtered. You will see justice done, Valerius. You will have the honors due a patrician of Rome and the property that you inherited. Why, that man is Marcus. Yes. You are the slave that once saved my life. I, the emperor of Rome, owe you an enormous debt of gratitude. I saved the life of a man without thinking if he were a king or a slave. Take this man down from the cross and all the other slaves. I want my reign as emperor to begin with this act of clemency. Hail, Caesar. See that full honors are rendered to Annius, and that he is buried as befits a patrician. <laughs> Aglai has consented to be my wife. She can't find words to thank you. From this moment, you are both free. Thank you, Caesar. And with Valerius and Nisa, you will join my suite in Rome. At my court, you'll find it easy to forget these terrible trials and start a happy and prosperous life. I hereby declare you all free citizens of Rome. 